Nintendo Switch just makes me smile this week as we get confirmation that they are not ditching the cartridges. Physical lovers unite in our hearts made of plastic. Plus, we've got new information on the Switch 2 codename, Zelda movie details, and more. So, good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. Hope you're all doing fantastic out there. And if you're not, stop all the negative thoughts. Stop all the negative vibes, and let's be excited about some good Nintendo stuff. Even if just for a few moments, it can improve your day. So what's going on everybody? Ed Zach from Switch Force. Let's kick it off with a little love for the physical media. I appreciate this. In an era where, you know, Nintendo's been kind of ruthless, game companies are disappointing at nearly every turn. Microsoft is ending amazing studios despite crazy success. Um, what's next? The death of cartridges? The death of physical media? the complete control of the rights of our media by the companies themselves. Well, no, at least not for another generation because Mr. Furukawa in his investors Q&A now fully translated has confirmed that Nintendo is committed to physical media. They will not be going all digital. And while I don't think anyone expected them to go completely digital, you know, they could have gone with a digital console. They could have made some significant strides that direction. We know Nintendo loves their money. And so ditching retail for the eShop I mean, it makes financial sense, but thankfully, Furukawa said, our objective is not to simply increase the share of digital sales, but to maximize overall game software sales, including sales of physical software. This policy will remain unchanged going forward. And it's very nice because he says, Nintendo will need to enhance user friendliness for both consumers who play package software and those who play download versions. Going forward, we intend to keep working on improvements to devise better solutions Voila, you're gonna get your cartridges. And if it's my best guess, the Switch 2 cartridges will look similar to the Switch 1. We interrupt this broadcast for a quick little message from other me, my other persona on my other channel, Ghost Robo, actually my first channel that went away and now has come back. I'm gonna be playing a bunch of Marvel Rivals, the brand new free-to-play hero shooter involving Hulk and Iron Man, Luna Snow, Magic, and more. If you're interested, definitely check out the channel. I'll put a link in the description. Maybe you didn't even know I had the channel. Maybe you didn't thought I stopped it. Well, you're right, but I've restarted it and be playing a bunch of Marvel Rivals. It doesn't fit over here because it's not on Switch, but it's great over there. And I hope you guys will check it out with me. If you want to do that, content will be starting up later today. And I'd super appreciate seeing you over there, seeing those thumbs up and seeing familiar faces. Switch 2 cartridges will look similar to the Switch 1, but have a notch or some sort of nub or some sort of thing that prevents them from going in the Switch 1. The rumor that we've heard is that, hey, the system is backwards compatible, whoopee, but that it's not forwards compatible. At least that seems to be maybe the thing or wait, it's backwards compatible, but it's not the Switch 1 isn't forwards compatible. Yeah, so Switch 2 cards won't work on Switch 1, but Switch 1 cards will work on Switch 2, so expect a notch. But at least you'll get to keep it on your shelf. I, I ebb and flow. I was really hardcore and physical for a while. I had a massive collection on my shelves. Then I decided it was clogging up my space, sold off a lot of it, and went digital for a long time. And now with so many weird things going on with emulators, shutdowns, online services, I'm like, you know what? I want my baby kitten to be able to play the games I played when I was a kid. So I got to get some physical copies of the big heavy hitters and I might be back on the physical train, but let me know which train you're on digital physical. Are you delighted that Nintendo at least isn't killing off the physical media? Now, speaking of killing off, we pray that West Ball will not kill off Zelda just as the movie franchise gets started. This is the director with all the pressure because he is directing Nintendo's first Zelda movie, a live action Zelda movie, and I think people assume he's going to screw it up. Now, I just went and saw The Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, and I thought it was really good. West Ball directed that, he also directed Maze Runner. I think the dude has the chops to get it done, but he knows the pressure. He talked about how he doesn't want to reveal his favorite Zelda game because uh, he thinks that's bad news and just going to set him up for failure and criticism. I'm curious what it is though. If he thinks it's not like a fan favorite, that's got to be why he wouldn't say it, right? If it was Breath of the Wild or Ocarina of Time or Link to the Past, I think he'd just say it. But I'm curious what it could be that would make people kind of shudder a bit. I don't know, maybe he's just overly protective. Maybe Nintendo was like, dude, do not talk about this at all. But at the same time, he sounds like he loves Zelda. He says, I can't say a lot about it, but Zelda is hugely important to me. It's up there with Star Wars for me in terms of what shaped me as a kid. Talking about adventure, that's the thing. 
And you're right. It's like one of the last untapped properties that is dying for a cinematic treatment, but we'll see what happens. The Expectation game, I got a taste of that with the Maze Runner movies. It was a small fan base, but a very passionate one, and they let me know when I didn't do it right for them. And it leveled up to a different level on this one, Planet of the Apes, where you understand people's passion for their stories, the Caesar trilogy in particular. So I take it in and then I let it go because obviously you can't have that while you're making a thousand decisions a day. You ingest it and hopefully you make good choices along the way in a string of thousands and thousands of choices that you make. And so I count myself as a gigantic Zelda fan and I trust it in a way as we move forward and hopefully it lines up with other people that want to see the same thing. I personally am very excited for the movie. I've been just waiting for Zelda to get the big screen treatment. I mean, I think we all have. It's something that's perfect for the screen, like Wes says, and I think he'll do it solid. I don't think Miyamoto and Nintendo will let a terrible Zelda movie pop out there. Even if live action seems odd, if they're committed to it, I trust them. They nailed the theme park, they nailed the Mario movie, and Nintendo seems to be experts at transitioning their media to other forms of media. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, and I hope other Zelda fans do too. If he has any other interviews, like, feel free to share, Wes. We'd like to know what your favorite Zelda is. And speaking of Zelda, I got boy a great video about a new Zelda game popping up later today, so check and see if it's on the channel because you're not going to want to miss that one. The rumor is piping hot like crazy and would completely rewrite the pace for the rest of 2024. Now, the pace of Switch 2 stuff is just running rampant. I figured this would happen as soon as Nintendo divulged, boom, everybody would go crazy, and now people are digging through all sorts of stuff. We talked about the shipping manifesto where it gave us a good look at what the system can do power-wise, positioning itself as a, you know, a handheld, strong PS4, and then more with DLSS. But now it seems that some have uncovered the code name for the system. Uh, they found this directly within code for software development kits, so they really believe that this is what the next switch to the code name is. It's not NX2, it's Muji. Now, people are confused about what Muji means and what it's in reference to because the Japanese translation is plain. So it could be a placeholder for the time being or a way that they're actually hiding the true code name. Muji also though is a Japanese retailer that sells a variety of goods, including clothing, household items, and accessories. And they have a no brand policy. Again, plain, it's evoking the same idea. So is this a placeholder code name that is evoking plain because it's just plain and Nintendo has yet to grant this a specific code name or is instead hiding the code name or is plain something that is indicative of what this console will be? It's really hard to understand and frankly, I don't think it matters so much. Code names at times can give you a little insight into the system, but like, you know, we've got things like Dolphin and NX and you know, really at the end of the day, how much did that do for you and your GameCube and for you and your Switch? Not a ton, but Muji, plain, could this system be plain? I mean, if we're to believe that it's a straight up successor with more power, I suppose that's plain. It also could be in reference to the clean look and nature of the system. Maybe it is going to be a very like high-end looking, sleek, simple system. And whereas the Switch 1 was so about color, so about neon Joy-Con, so about, you know, like all this red and blue, maybe the Switch 2 is gonna be all black or all white or all silver or all something like that and kind of hearken to a different sort of vibe for Nintendo as opposed to the color pop that they really dove headfirst into with the Switch 1. I mean, I expect them to still have colored options and different, you know, variants, of course, for the Joy-Con, for the Switch itself, for limited editions, for Pro Controllers, but it would be a interesting change of pace if they did go super sleek with this model to really emphasize the high-end nature uh, of the interior, the hardware itself. And I'd be totally down for that. But Muji is the suspected code name right now, and this just continues this trail, the breadcrumbs turning into actual pieces of bread and eventually becoming loaves of bread as we move forward through the stages of the Switch 2 reveal. We've just begun stage one. This is only gonna ramp up crazier and crazier. Nintendo announcing it. I mean, we've seen leakers like Brazil say that like, yeah, companies, third parties were waiting for Nintendo to do this to actually officialize it so they could start talking about their games. It's only gonna ramp up from here. It's only gonna get bigger and better and more awesome from here. But let me know what you think about Muji. Let me know what you think about the Zelda live action movie and how do you feel about Nintendo maintaining their commitment to Nintendo Switch to physical games and not trying to dive into some weird digital future. Furukawa also talked about how, you know, he knows announcing the system will impact Switch sales, 
but he does believe that they still can be strong. And again, I think that really just confirms they got a heavy hitter lineup. June can't come soon enough for me. It is 20 days away. Don't know if that direct is gonna be at the beginning of the month, the middle of the month, or the end of the month, but most likely we can probably bet the middle. That seems to be what Nintendo loves to do or they'll go at the end just to make us wait. But either way, we got exciting stuff ahead of us. Paper Mario in two weeks. The Switch 2 is just rolling and it's only gonna snowball from here. And then, hey, June is gonna be here before you know it. And then Muji before you know it as well. Anyways, until next time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. I love you lots. Switch Force, out.